um, this is the last uh, Google Hangout event for Global Astronomy Month 2013. This program has been produced together with uh, Astronomers Without Borders and uh, CosmoQuest. I'm very pleased to introduce you to today's guest, uh, Martin Ross and uh, William Zeidler. They will be presenting the latest film called Serene Universe, released in 2012. Martin Ross is a science filmmaker and planetary scientist. Most of his films are related to science and technology. He has made over 40 films and he has two broadcast credits. The film Spiral Galaxy, The Milky Way Unraveled, made together with filmmaker Peter Rinde Kroon from Amsterdam and broadcast in 2009 on Dutch television and the film Between Mars and the Svalbard, broadcast in Portugal in 2012. Serene Universe is a new project together with composer William Zeidler, with whom Martin has been working for several years. William Zeidler has been a musician for over five decades. William is one of a handful of professional players on the glass harmonica, an instrument invented by Benjamin Franklin on which he has performed around the world, including at the Kennedy Center and in film scores such as the recently resealed release Dangerous Creatures. He has composed and produced 10 CDs and the scores for a dozen films including um, Entre Marte and Svalbard, Between Mars and Svalbard, which aired on Portuguese national TV. I hope I pronounced all the name correctly. Martin and uh, William, welcome to AstroArt. Uh, we are very pleased to have you here and uh, we are looking forward to see your film. And at the end of the screening, we will have a, a Q&A session with uh, both of you. And um, the uh, viewers from home can uh, post their comments and questions on the Google Hangout or YouTube page or on uh, Twitter. Hashtag GAM Astro Art. William and Martin, if you would like to say a few words before we start the screening, uh, that would be great. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Daniela, for your introduction. Uh, it's an honor to be on the jo Global Astronomy Month uh, this year. <laughs> um, Yes, yeah, so the film um, you're going to see has, uh, was a, is a project, uh, an independent project by William Zeidler and me. There's some airplane coming by, I don't know. And um, uh, it started in 2008, really, when I uh, found a C uh, when I found a DVD uh, in a store uh, that was about. Um, Irish landscapes with music. So just one hour of landscapes and music. And in, the idea came up, why don't do this with all these nice images from space? So, well, I started to work on it and at the time I was, uh, I learned to, to know uh, William and William was interested and so, and so he said, let's, let's do it. So, well, after, well, we started in 2009, 2010 and so after three years of uh, work, in our free time mostly, uh, we finally managed to finish uh, Serene Universe. I think, uh, William, do you want to say something about as well? Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Is my audio working? Yes. yes. Uh, so I thought that the <clears throat> idea of doing music to the fantastic images from space was very inspiring and I thought this would be a great project to undertake. Great. And uh, maybe uh, we will get more questions later so uh, I'm, I'm sure I mean, people will be curious to know a bit more about the way you play this instrument and uh, well, we can discuss this after the film. So uh, I think we can move on to the uh, screening.
Welcome back to uh, the Q&A session with uh, Martin and uh, William. Uh, anyone can ask questions from home uh, using the Google Hangout or YouTube channels or Twitter, hashtag GAM AstroArt. Thanks, Martin and William, for this journey through the cosmos. I was really captured by the... Um, uh, feeling of traveling across space um, and I found it actually uh, difficult at times to follow the captions uh, below the images because I was mostly carried away by the um, feeling of traveling and I William so I've seen other films by you um, other documentaries and I I noticed that uh, you shifted from a much more science-based uh, and um, documentary-style work to uh, this work, which is a lot more abstract. Uh, it's uh, really um, quite uh, similar to uh, paintings somehow. I mean, these images are very remind can remind a lot of abstract paintings. So I, I would like to know a little bit more about this uh, shift style, uh, if you see this as a change in your uh, working method or if this particular film was mainly inspired by the many images that we saw listed in, uh, in the credits. And I have one more question. I I'd like to, I'll, if you could say a few words about this, I, I would really appreciate that. Well, uh, first of all, is my audio working? Yes, it is. Okay, good. We had problems with that earlier. 
no. I'd say uh, this film is quite different from your normal documentary in the, uh, your typical documentary, of, of which Martin and I have done many, uh, has kind of a built-in story and narrative, and the music is very subservient to that. But in this one, we're presenting this series of images, and it's almost uh, much more up to the music to carry the listener along. And this is my take as the, the musician, the composer, to support this project. So since there isn't a story, like Martin and I did a film about Svalbard and the scientists going and studying the outcroppings and all the rest of that. This is just the images all by themselves. So uh, I guess I'm back to it was more about the music carrying the listener along and trying to remind them about how amazing these images are. And uh, Martin, would you like? Uh, I don't know whether you can still hear this conversation. Uh, yes, I, I can. I can hear you, but apparently my camera is not okay. working properly, or the the image is frozen. I think. Yes, but that doesn't matter. We can still okay. hear you, and. Okay. Um, but it's an I, image of you deep in thought. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. And the blue background is uh, suitable to the to the film. And yes. um, Martin, do you have any? Um, can you please say something about your um, shift in the aesthetic of your last uh, film, the one that we just watched? Um, as I said, I'm quite familiar with your work. And I saw a very radical change from the more um, documentary style work that you made in the past years. Yes. So really, um, well, this was a, an independent project, um, not commissioned by any client or by uh, just by us. It was an idea, and really. I <coughs> I wanted to do something a bit more artistic with 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 those images, and there are so many images out there, and every day there are more. So you, as you have seen, probably, uh, well, you, uh, many of these images are you know, fairly well known, and I am sure that one of people of the audience would say, "Hey, but there is a nicer image of Saturn or of that that nebula that." just came out three weeks ago. Well, there you go. Uh, there's always nicer and more beautiful images coming out. But the whole idea was really to to make a film to make people yeah, relax, so to speak, uh, with, with uh, using space. In fact, uh, so the film has two versions. Um, that is uh, one with the subtitles, with the explanatory subtitles, as we have just seen. Uh, but there's also a version without the subtitles, and as you have yourself already mentioned, the you know the music is so strong that well, <laughs> you tend to forget about the subtitles. But the whole thing was that. So it's it's really just an ex for 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 me personally, it's it's a bit of an experiment also to see uh, how far can you carry this and uh, you know using just the images as a as a form of art. Um, and and the form to yeah to, 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 a bit of a zen a zen idea I think, and so the images carry they 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 are rather ambiguous at at some point I think but it's always the the music well in any film the music is what carries the emotion and what what tell you tells you how to feel in a certain way about what you see so so our work uh, William will between William and me was very much an iteration I was putting the images in order and then William would write to that and come come back to me I would edit some more change images and so it was a real iteration and the images and the music are very much intertwined I would just add to that that there's of course you know next week there's going to be an even better image of Saturn or whatever but that doesn't change the fact that the images that we have of Saturn today are just 
utterly magical. And, yes. and the images next week are going to be only more magical. And so mm. this, Im this film was really about trying to, and, and from my point of view, to remind the viewer of just how extraordinary all of these images are. And when we get even better ones next week, it'll be even more extraordinary. Yeah. So maybe there will be a follow-up to this film uh, according to the new images or well, uh, what kind of... Yes. Are you working on a new project already, or are you mainly promoting this film at the moment? Uh, we have well, ongoing projects. We have, but this is a this is a big thing now. We just finished, and you know, it actually it is. We are so we are putting it on sale. For, on, on, there's a DVD version uh, that is going to be on sale very soon in a, just a few weeks, and we then we will we'll watch you know what. What the, how the audience will react to it, um, and maybe there's further steps we can take, uh, depending on how the audience uh, will react to it. So. Uh, we have no questions yet, but uh, I'd like to ask you um, uh, just um, how you decided to call this film Serene Universe, because while I was watching I was very much carried away by both the music and the images, but uh, when I think about the universe, I, I think a serene would be the last uh, objective I would add next to, to the name universe. When I think of the universe, I, I think of um, also all the danger and the darkness and the things that we don't know. And um, so I... I was quite uh, intrigued by this name because it wouldn't be the first uh, objective that um, when we think of the universe uh, we will use. Well, William, this was a little bit your idea, the title. <laughs> it was entirely my idea of the title. <laughs> I guess I would say that uh, by the way, I'm getting horrible static. Can you still hear me all right? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. So, okay, so the idea of the serene universe. So, as you say, we personally, in our own lives as we go along, have, have sort of momentary instances. Well, maybe not so momentary, but we do have periods of not so serenity and yet if you step back the whole point of this film to me as the composer is to step back and see the the processes that unfold over hundreds and thousands and millions if not billions of years and there's a certain inevitability to all of that. So as, as we live our own individual lives and make our own little infinitesimal contributions to the unfolding of the universe, nevertheless, when you get to the end of the movie, um, I have that last little bit that's about with the piano that centers around the piano and that's kind of my nickname for it is the hymn to the cosmos there is a serenity about the unfolding and inexorable wonder of life and, and in spite of our own individual challenges that we have with that it's still just an extraordinary and unique experience that we are able to enjoy. So at least that was kind of the feeling that I was trying to bring to the music of Serene Universe. I think I understand. Is it about surrendering to the, um, uh, well, um, um, incredibly um, 
uh, unimaginable sides of the universe and its uh, impression. Surrendering to the magic. Absolutely. Yes. That's a great way to put it. Surrendering to the magic. Matthew, we we tend to be very <laughs> egocentric and, oh, life is all about me personally. But from the cosmological point of view, I'm gone. I'm born. I'm gone. And yet, the cosmos is going to continue to unfold in its extraordinarily marvelous way. Yes, so that's uh, how William got by the title, I think. Uh, for me, yes, uh, I think the title is, it, it, it is a film about looking up at night and yes. being, being all what you see. But if yes. you're in a, a dark spot and it's, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's clear outside, that, that is the feeling that we want to, 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 um, to convey with this film. So. Yes. To me, so it's the same. Yes. Yeah. So that that's the serene. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. I think Regardless of what's going on in your own individual life at that moment, you still look up at the stars and are just wow. Same. To me, it's the same. Yeah. It's really interesting to see how the images of the universe challenge our uh, consciousness, our uh, subconscious, even at um, uh, well, a cultural level and on a social level. Um, just thinking about the first image of the Earth taken from outer space, how much that um, yes. somehow influenced our perception of ourselves, and um, so uh, th these images have a very um, important effect on our psychology and uh, uh, consciousness. Um, okay, um, I have one more question for William. Uh, I'd like to know more about this instrument that you play. I, um, I know it has a very interesting history. Uh, I was reading that it's been used by Mozart for composing and um, uh, why Benjamin Franklin invented such an instrument? Uh, can you please tell us a little bit about the story and how you can, how you use it in uh, uh, your contemporary composition? Well, you're pres I, you must be talking about an instrument called the glass harmonica, which Absolutely. was invented by Benjamin Franklin in 1761, and it works on the wet finger around the wine glass idea which was kind of a new idea in England, was where it really first appeared in the sense of playing, having a set of wine glasses tuned with water so you could play melodies on them. And Franklin saw a concert of such an instrument and decided to come up with a more convenient arrangement of them as he was wont to do with so many things. And his idea was to nest, to turn the glasses sideways and nest them inside of each other so only the rims were exposed and have the whole assembly turning so you could play it somewhat piano-like. And uh, there's, there's something very magical about that leap of imagination to me. I mean, the instrument is beautiful, but as an example of, of how genius can see something simple and and say, well, of course you can do this other thing, and everyone goes, wow, that's so obvious. I would never think of that. So uh, it's the glass harmonica has become a cornerstone of my own musical career, and is to be kind of a symbol of the possibility of looking at something ordinary and seeing something extraordinary, which Franklin was so marvelous at doing. Thanks. Martin and William, would you like to say a few more uh, things about your film that we haven't uh, covered so far? We don't have questions at the, time, at the moment, so I think people are 
uh, maybe um, shy to ask or they just uh, surrendered as well to the view of this beautiful film? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think the film speaks for itself, really. Uh, uh, so I wouldn't really. I mean, all all the images are, of course, in the public domain. Huh? That's uh, that is that is clear. They're well. You saw in the uh, credits. It's all from ESA and NASA and ESO. Um, I tried to use to choose as many visible images as possible, which I mean, so images taken in the visible light. There are a few. Uh, um, artificial color images in there, but I try to choose as many visible light images as possible, you know, to 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 render it as visual, humanly visual as possible. Even though, of course, even the visual images are highly uh, treated, and you wouldn't see it exactly like that with your eyes. Um, but otherwise, um, and there's there's images from the Earth uh, in the beginning of the film from from on the surface, of course, as were filmed uh, throughout Europe, really. So, yeah, um, I guess that's uh, what I could say about uh, more about the images themselves. So they're all on 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 their all public domain. Um, on the, we have we have created a website. Uh, sereneuniverse.com and on the website you also have all the images listed with a uh, little explanation and with a link to the original images to the original to the source so people who want could go you know there and, and find the original images um, also on the DVD there is a whole slideshow apart from the film there's a whole slideshow where about with, with all the images and a little uh, explanation about them I'd, I'd say that in general, the job of the music composer for a film is to bring the emotion to the film. It's to, to, to bring the feeling of it. And me personally, I cannot go to the outside nighttime sky and look at the stars and not just have this tremendous emotional reaction. I mean, there's, and that's not to say there, there's the scientific, oh, I'm going to set up the telescope, and isn't that amazing, and I'm going to me measure all of that. And that's great, too, but there's, there's this other orthogonal direct dimension that's equally valid of why do we go to this trouble of setting up telescopes and looking at the sky and, you know, and investigating all this. It's because it's just so wonderful. So I, in the score, in the music score to Serene Universe, I tried to bring, to, rem to remind us, to remember that sense of wonder at looking at this universe. That's all, Saturn's been there. The galaxies have been there. They've been there for millions, billions, I don't know, gazillions of years. I'm not the scientist. I can't tell you. And yet, when we look at them, I can't help but responding with, my God, how wonderful. It's wonder, 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 wonderful. And so that was the, try to, the feeling that I tried to remind the viewer of as, we, as Martin and I take this journey through the fabulous images that we've been able to to record over the past couple three decades. It's interesting that we started the film screening for Global Astronomy Month 2013 with the film Overview by Planetary Collective and we finished this uh, screening, film screenings with your film and somehow I see a thread here uh, which is about looking at the bigger picture, at the bigger perspective of our life, of our universe, of ourselves. So detaching somehow uh, ourselves from our small uh, individual life and looking at the uh, bigger picture, which I think it's a very important perspective that um, should be more acknowledged uh, in the public domain. So, uh, Martin, William, thank you. 
and uh, Thank you. we uh, really enjoyed uh, your Thank film. You. Uh, this event uh, won't be fully uh, recorded on YouTube. There will be an editing. So if you would like to see the film, you need please contact Martin and William. Uh, they might be able to um, send you DVD. The, the, the DVD is on sale. Uh, will be on sale soon. And uh, I'd like to remind you that tomorrow will be the last uh, event for the Astra program. Uh, it's uh, the Cosmic Concert with um, another wonderful uh, music by composer Giovanni Renzo. Thanks a lot and see you Thank tomorrow. You. Thank you, William and uh, Martin. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you, everyone.